In Pokemon, there are a ton of titles that a Pokemon might carry, from Starter, to Mythical, to Pseudo-Legendary, and, of course, Legendary. Now, Legendary Pokemon have always had this air to them that makes people think that they're gonna be overpowered beasts. That has more to do with the lore of them rather than anything within the actual games though. I mean, look at the Lake Trio, they're not winning a tournament anytime soon. But there is a category of Legendary Pokemon that are meant to be busted. These are the Restricted Legends, or Box Legendary Pokemon. Think your Rayquazas, your Giratinas, anything on the box. In VGC, you're limited in the number of these Pokemon you're allowed to use per team. Typically, they're legal once every three years, and you're only allowed to run two per team, but Sword and Shield mix things up a bit, so who knows. Anyways, these Pokemon are meant to be busted and centralizing, but what happens when they fail to live up to their title? Just what is the worst legendary Pokemon in VGC? Let's talk about that. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I'm hoping to reach 100,000 subscribers before the year is over. Actually, if you love competitive Pokemon content, you should just sub now. I have tons of videos for you to binge on a playlist after this one ends. And if you want some battle content, my second channel, Moxie Boosted's Gym, has you covered there. Anyways, let's get into it. So for this video, I want to discuss what the weakest legendary Pokemon are, but I want to give every legendary a fair shake. This means that we'll count Calyrex, Calyrex Ice, and Calyrex Shadow Rider all under the umbrella of Calyrex. Therefore, Calyrex's base form won't be our weakest because you can just change it to another form to make it good. Same goes for Necrozma and Kyurem. We're going to be looking at all these Pokemon at their full potential, because we want to find out who the worst is even at their full power. So let's begin with our first suspect. Butter dog, the dog with the butter, butter dog, I got the butter on him. Now, Zamazenta, despite being one of the newest restricted legendary Pokemon, actually has built a bit of a reputation of being very underwhelming. In Generation 8, it had to live in the shadow of its counterpart of Zacian, which is a contender for being the strongest legendary Pokemon of all time. Zamazenta was dealt a pretty rough hand though, where Zacian started off being a fast and powerful Pokemon in its base form that shifted into a faster and more powerful Pokemon in its crown form, Zamazenta went from being a fast and powerful fighting type to trading off that speed to be a bulkier slower fighting and steel type. Its sky high defense means it's actually really difficult to KO Zamazenta, especially after it gains a defense boost on switch in with its ability Dauntless Shield. However, things start to fall apart once you get into the details. Yeah, Zamazenta has a really good typing, great stats, and a busted ability, but this all comes at the expense of its item slot. This means that Zamazenta can't run any berries, leftovers, or have any form of recovery. So in 99% of cases, any HP that it loses is gone for the match. Not only that, but Zamazenta has to decide if it wants to invest into its attack or bulk. If you invest into bulk, you're maximizing your defensive capabilities to survive a ton of hits and support the team, but you'll be doing some pretty mediocre damage even with Stab Close Combat and Behemoth Bash. If you invest in attack, yeah you'll do better damage, but now you're getting two shot by a ton of powerful legendary Pokemon in the game. Luckily, in Gen 9, Zamazenta was finally granted access to Body Press, meaning that defensive spreads can now deal decent damage without sacrificing that bulk, but this came at the cost of Dauntless Shield now only activating once per battle. So we have to ask the age-old question. What the dog doing? Well, it can support its partners with wide guards, snarl, and coaching, while having access to good burst damage and behemoth bash in close combat, but for the most part you don't want to waste your legendary slot on a support option. Because of this, Samazenta only has a few dedicated believers and is widely regarded as a low tier restricted legendary. Despite being the ultimate life form, Mewtwo falls very short of this title. Yes, it has impressive all-around stats and a really deep coverage move pool, but it's a huge victim of power creep. Mewtwo, for all of its strengths, isn't as min-maxed as future legendaries are, and doesn't have any of the super unique abilities that it would need to make up for this. In Generation 5, Mewtwo did gain access to its signature move Psy Strike, which allows for it to hit the physical defense stat of Pokemon with a special move. This is admittedly pretty useful for dealing massive damage to the likes of Kyogre, which has a weaker defense stat, but beyond that, the move is just a powered up Psy Shock. Mewtwo really is a decent Pokemon, but its weakness comes from the fact that it's hard to justify running it over the likes of Calyrex Shadow Rider or Lunala, which are both superior psychic types. Calyrex Shadow is not only a faster and more powerful Pokemon with access to Ghost Stab and powerful Astro Barrage, but also steps on Mewtwo's weirdly shaped toes by having Mewtwo's ability Unnerve and Grimnay all rolled into one. Or rather, 
as one. So maybe Mewtwo can have a niche in Trick Room, right? Well, no, Lunala outclasses it there, being slower, bulkier, and having a better ability in Shadow Shield. And once again, being a ghost type means that it can't be faked out on lead. Mewtwo really just struggles to keep up with the competition it faces on all fronts. Now, this used to be addressed by giving Mewtwo two mega forms, but with these forms being removed, there's less and less reason to try to slot it onto your VGC team. I do have one proposal though, which might fix all of this. Ultra Necrozma in Generation 7 had the exclusive ability of Neuroforce, which powered up the damage done by super effective attacks by 1.25 times, like a built-in expert belt. Because Ultra Necrozma no longer exists, this ability actually has no home. So why not give it to Mewtwo? It thematically fits, and it would actually give it a cool niche. It's already got that really deep coverage move pool. Combining Neuroforce with a held expert belt means it's a 1.25 times multiplier and a 1.2 multiplier stack, so every super effective attack from Mewtwo would have a 50% boost in power, similar to a choice specs, granting Mewtwo a true niche as the coverage machine legend and the ultimate life form. But that's just my idea. Peanut butter jelly the long, the long way. way. Peanut butter. Peanut butter the jelly long the long way. Okay, spoilers. This is the weakest legendary Pokemon. Gen 4 fans are definitely seething right now. But no, really, Giratina really is the weakest. It's for the same reasons as both Zamazenta and Mewtwo combined. So let's take a look. Giratina is a dragon and ghost type Pokemon with massive bulk in its base form, but it can change into its altered form by holding the Grissius core, making its offensive stats more impressive at the cost of its bulk. In its base form, Giratina's typing makes it have a negative matchup into the many, many dragon type legends of restricted formats, and even struggle to eat ice beams from the likes of Kyogre, which on paper it should actually beat. It lacks the recovery tools it needs to wall out anything in the format, and is just straight up food for the likes of Xerneas Eveltal in both Calyrex forms. And don't get me started on Zacian, it can't eat a hit from that if it even tried. Point is, its defensive form isn't defensive enough, and it only has base 100 attack and special attack, meaning it hits about as hard as a Flygon, which isn't really that hard, especially for a legendary Pokemon. Much like Zamazenta, it needs to decide if it wants to be a mediocre attacker or a mediocre defensive Pokemon. And to cap it all off, it doesn't even get Trick Room, which would grant it some kind of niche. Funny enough, both of its other counterparts in Dialga and Palkia have access to Trick Room, which is their niche. On the other hand, its offensive form has similar issues. Yes, the Grissius core and the base 120 attack and special attack now allow it to hit actually pretty hard, but this Giratina would benefit from being able to hit hard with its coverage moves. Ghost and Dragon are good offensive stabs, but not really into other legendary Pokemon which are going to soak those hits up like they're nothing. If you could run a Life Orb, then at least it'd be able to try to pick off a Zacian with Earth Power under Tailwind. But no, it's stuck only having good Ghost and Dragon moves. This would be more acceptable if it had a decent speed stat, but once again, Power Creep ruins its chances here. It can't outspeed Calyrex Shadow Rider or Zacian, and will likely get one shot by both of them. And given how strong these Pokemon are, it isn't actually a matchup that you can avoid. Giratina's only true niche is its super positive matchup into Groudon specifically. It's immune to ground moves due to Levitate, and can soak up attacks from it because it still has okay bulk, especially when comboed with Will-O-Wisp to drop the power of its physical attacks. But having this one matchup isn't worth running it when so many other legends can do the job just as good. Eveltal can eat up hits from Groudon and scare off opposing Calyrex. Speaking of which, if you want to use a more powerful ghost type, Calyrex Shadow Rider is right there. Giratina has the same issues as Mewtwo in that it can't be justified over its contemporaries on 99% of teams. So yeah, Giratina isn't that great. Unlike Mewtwo though, I actually don't have any really solid ideas as to how to make it better. If you ask me, I think a rework of Shadow Force would actually allow this thing to do something. Why not make it so Shadow Force drains the opponent's HP and heals Giratina when it's in its base defensive form, and have it bypass screens and stat changes when it's in its offensive form? At the very least then, it'd be able to function in whatever role it tries to fill, but that's just an idea. So yeah, Giratina is the weakest legendary Pokemon in VGC. It's a pretty close race, but the gap between it and the other legends is very real, so it's no wonder it lacks the same results the other legendary Pokemon have. Even the fringe ones like Kirin Black see someone do something cool with it once in a while, but no, not Giratina. If you enjoyed or learned anything new, please leave me a like, a comment, and subscribe. Like I said, I'm approaching 100,000 subs, so I appreciate the help. Speaking of help, if you want to support my work, check out my Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you get to see your name at the end of my videos, and for a $5 pledge, you can get access to an extra video every week where I build with top players. You can even now vote on which Pokemon we team build around. All of these people on screen have already decided to support my work on Patreon, so thank you all. Also, you can become a channel member. That's actually built into YouTube if you don't want to make a new account. If you can't support me that way, know that leaving a like and a comment will do more than enough to help me out. Anyways, thanks for watching. There's playlists for even more content if you want to check out more of this stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.